my friend had me put that last bit, bit in. I had her, I asked her to write um, a bio about me before I wrote my first one, and she was like, this explains you to a T. And I was like, okay, that works. Um, so we went over a bit about who I am. I do live in Portland, Oregon. Um, I work at SurveyMonkey, I got my bachelor's um, in Tacoma. Um, I'm an Afro-Latina woman who grew up in Sacramento, California. Uh, moved there from New York. Um, and aside from my bio, that was about it that I had to talk about on there. Um, so we're gonna, today I'm going to talk to you about some tips and tricks that I found for myself in navigating um, the tech world as a person of color. Um, I have been at my current job for two years. Um, so this is the condensed version, um, and I, not to take everything with a grain of salt, but also just remember that this is from my own experience. Everyone's ex lived experience is different. Um, so do that as you will. Um, the first thing I'm going to talk about um, is finding yourself. Um, <clears throat> it's okay to not want to bring your personal life into work. Work is work. Personal life is personal life. Um, but you can't expect everyone to know what you want them to know about you if you don't tell them. For example, until about 30 seconds ago, you didn't know that I was an Afro-Latino woman. I present as black, and that's it. Um, now, if you're going to say that I am not an Afro-Latino woman, we're going to have some issues, and we can talk about that later. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but on the screen, you'll see four questions that I think you should ask yourself before your first day at a new job, or when you're reassessing what you want to do in your career. Um, or where you are. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so when I started working at Serving Monkey, I was fresh out of college. I had literally graduated three months before I started. Um, I didn't know what I wanted to do aside from getting a paycheck and, and paying off my student loans. Um, and today I'm able to actually fully answer these questions. Um, and I'm going to give you guys, or sorry, you all, uh, my answers to those questions. So. Uh, what do I want people to know about me? I want people to know that I am Afro-Latina, and just because I don't look it doesn't mean that my lived experiences are any less. I'm also someone who battles depression and anxiety. My most marginalized identity that I carry is being black, and that is the identity that I fight hardest for. What do I expect people to know about me? I expect people to know that I am black. It's the color of my skin, it's how I present when I walk in a room. I also expect people to know that I am six foot two. That's not hard to miss. I am very tall. <laughs> um, the third question is who am I? And this is a question that I know I can confidently answer, but it is not a question that you need to answer out loud. Um, it is a piece for you to reflect on where you are. Um, what is your story? Who are you as a person? What do you want to get out of your life? Um, and the last question is what do I want to get out of my work experience? For me, I know that I want to work in diversity and inclusion. I want to find out about human resources, which is what I want to go into. Um, I know that I want to earn my paycheck. Um, and I want to share my story and lived experiences to help make my work environment more aware of, of, of the surroundings, of their surroundings. The next uh, portion um, is finding your people. Um, when I moved here, um, the office manager at my job, who I now consider a really great friend, um, invited me to something called Black Girls Tea. Um, and it was the first time I hung out with anyone outside of my roommate and her mom um, when I moved here. And it was really great for me to, to see that, hey, okay, I moved to Portland. It is very overwhelmingly, overwhelmingly white, but I do know that there are people here that I can connect with. Um, Um, sorry, the, I didn't realize I had the clicker, no one told me, um, <laughs> um, for finding your people, I encourage you to research um, ERGs, which are employee resource groups, um, at your organization, or start one if you do not have one, um, it is, at my company, there are, are three that I can think of, um, that are based on, um, they're voluntary employee-led groups that foster um, diversity and inclusive conversations. Um, they can be used to keep your, account, your company accountable, um, host accountable spaces, and give discussion spaces, um, and, or drive initiatives for community involvement, among more things. Um, find, oh, sorry. Finding your person um, or group or, group or person. 
Um, for me, I found that I do need to have a balance of different people in my life um, that I can reach out to that are from each of my carried identities. So uh, from being a woman, from being black, from being Latina, um, being somebody who battles mental illness, um, I found that I do need to have a circle that is very inclusive for that um, because it's really hard sometimes to have to explain yourself over and over again to someone who doesn't carry that identity because you then have to set them up for success and then explain your issue. And that's just really, really hard um, and it's a lot of emotional labor. <clears throat> um, to quote my favorite show of all time, Grey's Anatomy, all 13, 14 seasons I have seen, um, you're my person. It's important to establish who you can call on and who, you, when you can call on them uh, for different things. And you will rotate through people, and that's okay. You don't need to establish someone that's going to be there for five years, ten years, whatever. If you want to, great. If you just need someone for the interim, that's great. Find someone that you know that you can count on for whatever your need is at that time. Uh, my best friend Jenny lives in Japan right now. Uh, she's spending a year teaching English. So I know that I can really call her on the weekends, which are because she's 16 hours ahead. Um, but I also know that I can talk to her about being from a mixed background um, and everything for uh, if I want someone who is removed from a situation and to give me feedback on it. Um, on the other hand, my friend Steph, who has been my absolute saving grace this year, um, I had surgery a couple of months ago, um, and I my family's not here, so um, I was on my own after for recovery. Um, and she reached out to me and made sure that I knew that I had a support system um, and a home-cooked meal as soon as I could eat one. Um, but she's my go-to for every day, venting about my job, how much I'm working, which is a lot. Um, and she's a son who she'll send me pictures of. He's a year old and like babies are my kryptonite and it's fine. Um, but it just like turns my whole day around. Um, finding your online community. Personally, I am a member of um, multiple communities based on being a person of color, um, for your ethnic background, uh, hobbies, um, your job. Um, and I do encourage you to research or connect with people um, to see if you can find those things because, especially, I'm an extroverted introvert um, for myself. I don't necessarily like to be hanging out with people all the time and I would much rather be behind a keyboard talking to someone, um, if at all possible. Sometimes you just need to recharge. Um, <clears throat> And I'm not saying that you should only find people that match your marginalized identity, but as I said earlier, it's so much harder to have to explain to someone, here's how I set this up, and then here's the issue at hand. Um, so finding those groups is really great um, <clears throat> to set yourself up for success and to set yourself up for that self-care. Um, because we all need to vent at some time. It's okay. It's a natural thing to need to do. Um, so, the third point I have is challenge by choice. Um, this is something that I took away from my college experience um, in a lot of discussions. Um, ask the question, challenge by choice. Just remember that like, if you do challenge someone, it can come back to you. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a positive experience. It doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a negative experience. Um, you can make a change, but change takes time. And if you are not someone who's a part of your C-suite, um, so like CEO, CTO, um, that higher up level, um, that change is going to take a lot more time. Um, and that said, don't give up on what you believe in. Um, I had the pleasure of hearing Elizabeth Robillard speak um, at ACTW, and she said, passion is not pushy. Um, being passionate about what you believe in and what you want to do it shows that you're invested, you're not going anywhere, and you are like in it. You're, like, you're, you're not going anywhere. That's really the main thing on it. Um, but today's world, a lot of people don't like when people have, who have passion get involved in things because it threatens their ability to coast. If I'm not doing this and this person's doing this, that puts my well-being at, at risk, which can be true, but when we're all working towards a greater good of diversity and inclusion, it's not a, a race. Um, it is a collective effort that we all need to be working on together. Um, <clears throat> on the other side of that, if you are able to take a meeting um, with or ask for a meeting with your CEO, um, I have had the pleasure of being able to speak with my CEO uh, about DNI. and um, If you are able to do that, be respectful. Um, just as a general uh, 
good rule of thumb, I think. Um, start the conversation. Remember to be respectful. Don't change what you want to say. You can, I mean, take the time to write down what you want to say. For me, I'm someone who, like, as you can tell, speaking out, like, and just kind of, not ad-libbing, but kind of just going with the flow is not necessarily my favorite thing. Um, and so I lose what I'm trying to say. Um, write down what you want to say so that you can be the most impactful in that conversation. Um, but do remember that there could be consequences. Um, what does it mean for me in two weeks? What does it mean for me in a year? Am I taking something... Am I taking this action to forward myself professionally, or am I taking this action because I'm hurt right now and I need someone else to hear it, and I need this to be resolved right now? Um, as um, one of two of the earlier speakers talked about, um, something that they brought to HR and they got in trouble for it. Just keeping in mind that unfortunately that is kind of the world that we live in where it's like if you bring it up, if you say someone's a racist and they're kind of being a little bit racist, you may get in trouble because you've made the action of calling them out. Which I don't agree with, but just saying that. Um, fourth point is reaching out. Um, your best asset to your workplace and to yourself is your presence. And that includes your mental, physical, and emotional well-being. Um, if you're not okay by your own definition, you can't be productive, you can't articulate what you need, um, and you can't fight for yourself or others. <coughs> um, Asking yourself what you need is a first step in establishing what you can control. Set up your provider suite. Find a primary care physician, a therapist, a psychologist, a yoga teacher, a chiropractor. Whatever you need to make yourself comfortable and give yourself the space to be able to reach out in times of need without it being an emergency. Um, for me, setting up my primary care physician, massage therapy for my shoulder, um, and having my therapist has been my provider suite that I need to have at all times. Um, so I do encourage you, each of you, to check in with yourselves and see what your top things are um, for if you don't have them established already or if you do and don't have an appointment currently with them, I encourage you to take that time and set that up for yourself um, <clears throat> before, the, before the end of the year. Not necessarily having the appointment before the end of the year or like going to yoga or meditation, but making sure that you check in with yourself before the end of the year. Um, your company should have, or organization should have, a human resources department, um, and you would have a specific person that you would go to, your HR business partner or rep. Um, if you find someone is gaslighting you, um, gaslighting others, being really, really rude in a word I won't use right now, um, report it. Uh, there's nothing worse than letting someone attack another person or attack you and making you feel worthless and not doing anything about it. And again, you are your best advocate and your best asset. Um, so <clears throat> keeping it bottled up or letting it continue means your presence is diminished. And you, again, you can't do everything that you need to do. Um, knowing your limits is the most important part of this. Um, I wish that I had listened to people um, at my work when they said to kind of slow down the first time. Um, I didn't. And um, after months and months of working on DNI initiatives um, at my job and trying to change a lot of things, I had to make the heartbreaking decision to step back from it completely, um, which for me was like, it felt like taking like a piece of me away. Um, because for my entire life, that has been something that I have advocated for. Um, <clears throat> uh, but when I stepped away from it, I did feel a lot lighter and I felt happier, although I don't want to admit it. Um, but in that moment, that's what I needed. Um, so if you need to take time away from working on DNI, it's okay. No one's going to tell you that you can't come back to it. No one's going to tell you that you dropped out of it. Um, take the time that you need. Respect yourself and respect your your limits. Um, the on the slide it says if you are not being paid to do this work, either start charging, negotiate your pay, or reduce how much you give to it. So for me, I reduced how much I gave to it. Again, paycheck is everything. Um, I wish that I had been stronger at that time to negotiate my pay because it, when I was doing the work, I was doing the job of three different people. So I was doing my core role, um, doing recruiting, and doing uh, DNI initiative work. Um, so I wish I had been strong enough for myself to do that because I think I would be in a, a much better position for what I needed at that time. Um, and just remember that it's not your job to teach everyone about everything. 
Google is a thing. Um, finding the little things. So, uh, finding things that make you happy. For me, it is music and TV shows and pop culture. Uh, I, I love it. I, I'm sorry, I love it. The Kardashians are my favorite. Um, but I will like go and recharge and comb through like a Wikipedia page for a TV show so that I can learn everything about it, catch up, find little fan theories, except for Game of Thrones because there's too much stuff going on in that. Um, <clears throat> But recharging doesn't need to be a long, extensive thing. It can be 30 minutes, it can be five minutes, just taking a step back um, and saying, acknowledging, okay, I'm not okay right now. I need to take a step back, I need to not necessarily shut down, but I need to calm down, do whatever. Um, so I, on the screen, I wrote a couple of different things. Um, so music, TV shows, movies, getting into makeup, art and music, knitting. Um, does anyone have any other things that they do for themselves? to recharge for whatever reason. It doesn't necessarily need to be related to my topic. Sleep. Sleep. Yes, that is a very good one. <laughs> okay, so you might be asking yourself, what, do I, what if I don't think I carry a marginalized identity or if I'm just an ally? Great question. Being an ally is not a future or past action. It is continuous movement through your everyday world. It's great to want to celebrate the things that you have accomplished in terms of DNI, and you absolutely should. But remember that you shouldn't take continual space that exceeds what you need. If you are stepping into the space of someone who is in a marginalized position and taking credit for something that you did, which is, again, super great, but if you are taking space away from them, step back and think about it. Um, there's nothing, I mean, for me, I get really, really hurt when someone like, I work, with a, I work with a lot of white people. Um, it's until, like, yeah, I work with a lot of white people. Um, <laughs> um, but working with a lot of them in DNI, there's nothing worse for me than having actions and accomplishments that I've done that have been a collective movement only be celebrated with the white name. So where it's saying, like, oh, like, this person has accomplished this. Great. There are two other people that worked on this thing. Where is that? And if you feed into that and allow it to happen, that's just not going to set anyone up for success or, frankly, to want to work with you again. Um, if you screw up, if slash when you screw up, acknowledge it, understand the impact, not your intent. Your intent is great, but it doesn't change the experience that the person who's on the other side of it experiences. And I know that a lot, everyone here already knows that, but it's just a great reminder to just like, okay, I am doing the right thing. Um, and change how you act moving forward. Um, call out to call in, not to penalize. So call people out to change the, change the actions moving forward. Not to say like, hey, you did this wrong, so we're gonna talk about this for like 30 minutes and tell you everything you did wrong. Do, hey, you know, like, I noticed that you, like, referred to someone in, with the wrong pronouns. From my personal experience, I know that they do appreciate to have, like, use these pronouns, which also can get into, like, gray area, um, but for, like, if, sorry, if it's your place to tell someone else that someone's preferred pronouns, um, but just remember that, like, you're not trying to penalize anyone, and on the other side of that, no one's trying to penalize you. We're just trying to move forward um, and set everyone up to be on the same same side. Um, and I know a couple of presentations have talked about this where um, we do, uh, everyone's a little bit judgmental and everyone's a little bit prejudiced. It's not your fault, um, it's how our brains are designed. We create in, in groups and out groups to identify things and people um, that look like us and that person, uh, oh my gosh, what is the word I'm looking for? Um, people that look like us and that we identify as reassuring and things that can be a threat. So think about identifying a person versus a lion. A lion is probably gonna be that threat. The person, you may not know who they are, they are an unknown, but they're not a threat, but you do set things up in your head and it's not a thing of like, oh my gosh, I'm doing this, this is, no, this is wrong, ah! Everyone does it, it's just where you take that from there. Um, asking to understand. Asking questions is how we learn. Think back to when you were two to three years old. Um, you probably asked your parents why. 
Why? Why do I have to go to bed? Why do I have to do this? Why is the sky blue? You asked a lot of questions and a lot of them started with why. Um, I know this is my nephew is too and he's asking a lot of why questions. Um, your brain hasn't changed, it still wants to know why, but as a productive, uh, <clears throat> decent adult human on this earth, you know that there is a time and place uh, for asking those why questions and you know what the question, that the questions can have consequences. Uh, when you ask about someone's identity, don't ask them to explain the whole history. Don't ask me what it's like being black or if all black people do X, Y, or Z. I can't speak for everyone. I can't even speak for my siblings on their experiences. <clears throat> ask me who I am and what you want to know about me. Engage me as Haley, not as the black woman standing in front of you. If you have to think about a question and if it will offend someone, it's probably not the best time or place to ask it. Um, again, Google is a resource, and also my favorite thing is, let me Google that for you, um, which I wish I could just send out to everyone as a just a general thing. Um, but something that I have told myself to do is not to ask, like, hey, like, what's your name? Tell me about you. Like, who are you? Um, it's tell me your story. Your story. Uh, tell me your story or tell me something about you. Um, give people the opportunity to engage it. Don't make them engage it. And also allow them to tell, tell you what they want to tell you. Um, for me, I could, like, if you ask me what's your story, I'm going to give you, like, a 10-minute thing. And some people are going to be like, I'm standing in front of you. What do you want to know, like, right now? <clears throat> um, so, again... Everyone here, um, just in general, thank you for coming to this conference, um, but we all advocate for everyone. Um, you advocate for yourself, you advocate for those close to you, and you do advocate for the people that you don't even know. Um, and remember that no one is perfect, and it is a learning experience. We're not going to get it all right at the first time or the second time. It's going to be a continual process. Um, open up discussions to the group rather than one singular person, especially if it, the topic is about someone's specific identity that may make them feel other, open it up to the group. And that's another call-in where it's, okay, we're going to take this, but and we're not saying, like, oh, you did this wrong. We're just going to learn from this. Like, turn it into a group discussion if, it, if it's appropriate. Um, don't overset those boundaries for people who may not um, want to engage their uh, carried identities in the workplace, but remember that we're all human, we all, if we feel other, you feel hurt. It's okay to feel hurt if someone's talking about you or talking about your identities. But if you don't acknowledge that, that you may be doing that to someone, that's where the issue is. Um, so takeaways, um, you write your own narrative. You tell people what you want them to know about you. You can expect people to know certain things, but you can't expect them to know everything. Set everyone up for success in, in engaging you. Balance your presence. Um, ask and take what you need. And that may be in the workplace as well. Taking PTO, taking a day off, asking for a new desk uh, location or anything like that. Um, whatever you need to be able to function and be productive in your space. Um, <clears throat> tell your story, not the story you think people want to hear. So be true to yourself as much as you want to. Um, not, I mean... Lying, do what you will. Um, but if you are not comfortable or you're not ready to take that step to talk about certain, something about your identity in the workplace, don't feel bad about that. It's not every, it's not someone else's business. Um, but also just remember that, like you, again, you are your best advocate and stay authentic to yourself. Um, and the final thing is taking care of yourself. So again, um, taking the time that you need, taking the space you need, reaching out to people. Um, whether it be someone you haven't talked to in a while, someone you talk to every day, um, whatever you need to take care of yourself. And again, it's going to be different for every single person. So.